Grace, mercy, and peace may be multiplied unto you. This is Apostle Ella. I want to take a moment of time to deal with biblical names and understanding what is the concept of names uh, by scripture, as well as begin to articulate uh, some of the names as to what they mean. And as I say that, you know, as a Western world culture, usually we name individuals just to give them an identity. Uh, John, Sue, Sam, Mary, etc. So we give names, but we may not put value into the names as to what else they speak to other than identity. And I bring that to your attention because in the ancient culture, especially when you get back into ancient uh, Hebrew or ancient Sumerian, uh, most of the ancient cultural texts or, or writings or identities that were given to people were more than just an identity. They also spoke to their character which is why oftentimes, usually in families, they would rename their sons after their fathers or their grandfathers, etc., because based upon the character that that individual was operating in, then uh, they, they believed in the concept of that character uh, carrying over to the next generation for those characteristics to be manifested. And so in that, we come to discover in most of the scriptural names that we find, they have ties to a, a character or characteristic or rep, rep uh, or a reputation that goes along with that name. And if you think about it, if a name means something or has character to it, technically what we continue to call somebody, they end up answering to. So, so in that, uh, today I just wanted to do a teaching regarding Jacob and Israel. Jacob and Israel. Now, Jacob's name we find manifesting in scripture around Genesis chapter 25, verse 26. Uh, and uh, when, you, when you look at that, it says, uh, you know, out of the Hebrew dialect with his name, uh, it's technically correctly pronounced Jacob. Because in the Hebrew, uh, there is no just sound in the dialect. So Yaakov is the pronunciation. And once again, it's a Hebrew name that means to supplant or to come, come behind or to overtake or to seize by the heel. Because as we know the story in Genesis 25, 26, when Jacob and Esau were being born, uh, uh, Jacob grabbed the heel of his brother Esau in the process. Now in that, we also come to discover as we drill down and go a little bit deeper into this name, Jacob or Jacob, it also means restrainer or trickster. And if you think about it, even as we look at the story of Jacob or Jacob in Genesis, we come to discover in the time of, of obtaining his brother's birthright, it was about him using trickery in order to get past um, Isaac, his father. And so in that, in the same turn, we begin to see that even as his life is going forward, when he was uh, uh, married off to uh, uh, Leah and so forth, there was trickery that was involved. Uh, so, so I bring that to your attention because of, once again, what his name stands for. Now, in that, um, um, what else is very interesting that many may not know is that his name also means James in the Greek. Um, we get the name James, Ichabos, uh, from the Greek terminology, which is James, but it's only the Greek translation of the Hebrew name Jacob or Yaakov. So, so in that, thought you might find that very interesting in this teaching. Now, as I say that, once again, based upon Jacob or Jacob's name, what it means or the character or the reputation that goes along with it, we began to see that not only is it something that is spoken as an identity for him, but it becomes something that becomes inherent to those who are connected to him by family line, as well as other individuals that bear that same name or identity or character. So now it's bigger than one person's name or identity. Once again, it becomes something that you're speaking to as a character. So uh, like, for instance, the scripture says in Psalms 
22, 23, all you descendants of Jacob glorify him. Psalms 14, 7, when the Lord restores his captive people, Jacob will rejoice. But we're not talking about the one individual Jacob who bore the name as far as we can tell by the history of scripture. We're talking about the descendants of him that now bear his name or i.e. his character being associated with their identity. All right. And in that verse, you know, Psalms 14 verse 7 it says, when the Lord restores his captive people, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. Now, for those that, that know the biblical story, uh, Jacob was his name, but his name ended up getting changed to Israel. So in that, you know, we, we begin to ask, well, then what does the name Israel mean? Well, when you look at it in the Hebrew dialect, the name Israel or the character of Israel means he who the Lord prevails with. And when we talk about prevailing, the word prevail comes from the Hebrew word yakal, which means to endure. He that the Lord has endured with, or he that the Lord has got power and ability or influence with that now has made them become a victor. We even find the definition of the character of this name actually in scripture. When you turn to Genesis chapter 32, verse 28, it says, and he said, thy name or the Hebrew word Shem, which means reputation or character shall be called no more Jacob. So he says, basically in the changing of your name, I'm changing your character that you're being called in order for you to answer to. So in that, he says, it is now Israel, for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed, which now once again gives us where the terminology of the meaning of the name Israel, he who the Lord prevails with. Now, once again, in the changing of this individual's name uh, or identity, to one that becomes an inherited uh, character or reputation. When we look at Genesis uh, chapter 49, verse two, it says, gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel, your father or your family or your progenitor or, or, or your originator. This verse is not talking specifically about Jacob, the person, or Israel being the one and same person. It's talking about the inherited identity that comes from them, which he says, you know, uh, you were once the sons of trickery. You were once the sons of supplanters. You were once the sons of overtakers by nature, but now you have become sons of who are deemed by the character of being one who prevails or one who is a victor because I, I the Lord, have been operating in your life to make you become one who has endurance and one who has power, which means influence or ability or both. Uh, another point in the same turn with these names, Jacob and Israel, uh, is when you look in Genesis chapter 50, verse 25, the scripture says Joseph, or correctly pronounced Yusuf, took an oath of the children of Israel, meaning those, once again, who bear the identity or the character or the reputation of being those who have prevailed with the Lord, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So in that once again, this particular teaching, I just want to bring to your attention that names, according to the scripture, should not just be uh, identified with what someone is being called in their identity, but it also has a spiritual undertone as to the character that's being spoken to the person, about the person, or for what the person will manifest in their walking out their life going forward as they answer to that identity or character. 
So with that being said, I pray this has been a blessed teaching for you to understand, at least in the beginning phases, as you begin to look at names in scripture and, and understand what they mean so that as you continue on your divine destiny in the Lord, you can do it through Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone by understanding either what you're being called or what you're calling others. Amen, amen, and amen.